Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back off holiday. Don't talk shit. What was well it eating? Known. What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she went to Mars and that. Yeah. It's just that fish are weird, aren't they? Well, no, there's a go. <laughs> That's a bollocks story, once again. No, I don't no. know where you've heard it or read it. It's a well known story. A seven foot goldfish in your bath. But, uh, no, fish are weird. Ted, like you're not going to believe this. <laughs> Come up here. Well, how many fish do you see that have naturally died? That's the weird thing. What do you mean? Just ping-ponging around these ideas in your mind. You just never see fish sort of just floating about in the water and you go, oh, died of old age. It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? When you think Sometimes. of the amount of fish... Not when you think of the amount of fish that are in the sea. There's loads of them, and yet you never... Because they're eaten straight away. The, that's what I'm saying, though. Are they eaten when they're dead... Or are they just being eaten? Well, most things like that don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird, though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a, you know, it's a jungle out there. Yeah, no, that's why I said I, oh, I wouldn't want to live in the sea. Because you've got. Are you old... sure you're not on morphine, as we speak? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have. You're in the sea, you've got to be constantly sort of alert, haven't you? Yeah, but that's stuff. true of all animals. No, worse than the sea. The sea is like full of. Uh, you've got an enemy round every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love it! I love it's like a warning to crabs exactly. and young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. 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 What <laughs> advice would you give? Okay, then. What advice would you give? Um, Some plankton. <laughs> now, what advice would you give um, uh, a, a, a two week old octopus? Um. And what am I? Am I an octopus? <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're you. We've so, set it up that it can understand you with some sort of... Uh, one of your inventions to talk to the animals. One of your brilliant inventions is just to watch you strap on its tentacle and it can understand human talk. Um, you know, but, you know, I'm sure you'll, you'll come up with that one day. Um, what, what do you say to it? What would you say to an octopus, a young octopus, who wants to set out by himself in the sea? Stay, stay close to the rocks. Um and just let it know about the thing about it can get into a small space. You know, if you look at an hole, don't go, oh, I can't get in there. And sort of squash it and show itself. <laughs> and I can roll it into a ball and sort of say, look at that. Is that hurting? Uh, and, uh, I love the fact that the drugs make no difference. No. It's like there's no difference. Oh, God. Because that's the only thing that that's got in there. It's boneless. So <laughs> that's, its, that's its special power. That's, that's what it. it can do. You can roll it up, and uh, <laughs> as long as it knows that. But that's the problem with a lot of powers, isn't it? That's that's the same thing about how people say don't have a go at bees because they're not like wasps. They don't sting you because once they sting you, they die. That doesn't know that, does it? It's also not true, but yeah. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't know, so it's not like the bees going around going, "I'm not going to sting you because I'll die if I do." What's your point there? I don't understand. I'm just saying we shouldn't we how, shouldn't how do, dislike how, bees. Well, how do how do these creatures know what to do? Instinct. I suppose it's like that story you told me about the scorpion, isn't it? It's that, isn't it? What the scorpion and the frog? Yeah. What the fable? Yeah. What was it? It was a frog. It was a, going. It was a, a, a scorpion needed to get across a, a river, and it said to a frog, "Can you give me a lift?" And the frog said, "Well, no, of course not, because." you'll sting me, you're a scorpion. And he goes, well, no, why would I do that? If I sting you and I'm in the water and you drown, I drown. And the frog went, good point. So the frog gives him a piggyback, going across the river, halfway across, the scorpion stings the frog, and the frog's dying. And the frog's going, now I'm going to die, and you're going to die. So why did you do that? And the scorpion said, because I'm a scorpion. What do you think that, that was meant to point out? Just sort of be careful who you help no it's meant to point out that you are what you are you are your nature no but it's also that thing of like uh, I'm telling you it's nothing to do with if what you're the driving was... no, and, and no. someone's hitchhiking no. don't pick them up because no, no. it's nothing to do mm. with the mentality or the reasoning or the, 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 the anything to do with the frog at all 
the pain I, of it. Well, I don't know. I think Aesop was thinking a lot about the hitchhiking problem. It wouldn't happen. That's the problem with a lot of them fables. You're putting animals together that wouldn't meet. Oh, whereas insects go around shagging leaves. Well, insects are with the leaves, whereas I don't know where a scorpion is knocking around with a frog. <laughs> I mean, there's that weird one I remember uh, <laughs> watching. Annoyed. I remember hearing something about this lizard that sort of gets pally with the scorpions, even though they're not mates. They don't get on, but they've kind of got this agreement that the the scorpion can live in their house if they guard it. And there's, there's the local people used to stick their hands down these holes and get the lizards to make slippers out of them. And... <laughs> The lizards were getting sick of this, and I think somehow something happened where the lizards thought, look, enough's enough, uh, we'll let you sleep in our den if you stand by the door. So the scorpion used to, like, stand by the door and stay awake at night whilst the lizard's having a kip. Fella comes along wanting to make some new slippers, puts his hand down the hole, scorpion gets him. Now, yeah. that's, that's what's weird with that, that two it's enemies... I've worked together. It's called a symbiotic relationship. But at no point did they sit down and go, right, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what, I'll give you shelter. You give me that sting in case uh, there's a fellow who wants to make slippers. Because all this happened way... Weird, though, because people... There's nothing that happens like that in people, is there? Of course there is. What, like that, where you don't get on but you work with them? Of course there is. What? Loads of business relationships. What, what do you mean? No, but Turn normally you stay. What I mean is, you stay animals. away if someone's being a bit weird. You know, those are examples where you might go, "Well, I hate to do it, but my only option is to go with X, Y, and Z." But what what I'm saying is, though, let me just finish. Go on. I I live in an area where you know I sort of know a lot of the locals, and there's a local woman who's a bit mad. Yeah. Now I know her, but I choose to sort of stay away because. It scares you a bit, doesn't it, when something's like that and it's unpredictable. So, uh, you know, when I was in the little corner shop, she came in, right? Uh, she screams a lot, just screams for the sake of it. And you don't know if, if she's upset or if she's just doing it for attention, then the scream will go from screaming to laughing. <laughs> so you're like, oh, what's going on? And it was like, like rush hour. It, it was like rush hour time in the shop. <laughs> And she chose to go in then, and she doesn't work, so it was like, why is she coming in now? She's had all day to go in. Mm. She just picked the busy time. And she was like, about three places in front of me. And she was only buying a Yorkie and some earbuds. Right? And I thought, <laughs> a, what, a Yorkie and some earbuds? Yeah, and I thought, what's the rush? You've come at the wrong time, and you bought stuff that could have waited. You should never have to rush out for a, a Yorkie or an earbud, is what I'm saying. Right? Uh, and I ended up sort of going, oh, I can't stand this. And I left. Now, that was me being like I would expect the scorpion to be, or the lizard. I don't know what you're talking about now. <laughs> I have I no don't know idea. Where they are. Okay, well, what do you mean? No, I'm just saying how, like, I chose that that woman could be dangerous, so I'll leave, I'll leave her to it. And that's, that's where nature kicks in. And you go, I don't want to be here. I don't know what she's going to do. She's unpredictable. I'll pop back later. <laughs> And then, I, you know, I look out, I can see the shop, I saw her go, and she was, like, oh. laughing to herself again and trying to climb up some ladders. And I thought, once she's gone, I'll, I'll nick back. <laughs> I don't know what my point was. I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's only got to really down the round that's the jingle for Carl's Diary. We have bacon and egg on toast. I'm eager to get through the brown sauce as the bottle is too big to go in any cupboard. So it has to be left on the sideboard. <laughs> so I had about four dollops of the stuff. I love that because, you know, that made it into the diary. He's concerned about the fact that the brown sauce know, is the, too the big. So he's rushing through it. I know, but I'm just saying the kitchen isn't that big. And it <sighs> looks messy when you leave stuff out, doesn't it? And we've got this giant brown sauce bottle. <laughs> and I don't want to chuck it away because that'd be a waste. So you're having brain sauce and everything, well, your cornflakes, yeah. in your tea. Yeah. A wasp got in the flat. You know trouble's brewing. <laughs> it was massive. The biggest wasp ever. Suzanne asked me to get it out, but I wanted to take a picture of it first. <laughs> I was getting my phone ready when it flew at me. I reckon the sting on it could have killed a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so specific. It ended up flying out the window on its own. Drama <laughs> over Oh, God. We went out for tea. You're always in a caf. That's what, this diary, you're always, you spend so much time in a cafe. There were loads of flying ants. I kept kicking the table because I could feel them on my legs. I wouldn't be that jumpy normally, but I still had flashbacks of the giant wasp from the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne told me to stop being stupid because I was ruining her night out. A night out in a cab? <laughs> <laughs> what Ready the... Oh, what God. Was her, what was it, her birthday? And flashbacks from an incident. Yeah. Like he's some sort of, like, war veteran. <laughs> what is it? It's the wasp. It could have killed a kitten. Bought some wallpaper. We got back and got on with it. The wall that we've papered before has got a big mirror under it. We papered on top of it again. I ended up reading my phrase book while Suzanne did the rest of the tidying up. Now, what's your phrase book? I don't, this, is, this is just you trying to master English, is it? It's just a book that tells you little sayings and how they came about. An interesting phrase is potluck. It came about when all people ate is stews. They used to chuck all sorts of stuff into the stew. You stuck your spoon in and sometimes you got something nice like beef or you could end up with a bit of frog. It's potluck. <laughs> Good night, isn't it? That's what it said in the book, did it? A bit of frog. Got up and checked the wallpaper out. There are loads of air bumps and it's buckled <laughs> on the joins. I wish we'd never done it. <laughs> Suzanne said the washer was broke and it's out of its warranty. She called up the people who made it and they said it will cost £150 to fix. I don't know how they know that when they haven't even seen it. I want to smash it to bits and see what they can do for £150. <laughs> <laughs> so much anger. <laughs> I want to smash it to bits. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? 150, you sure? Yeah, Come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just like a cube. It's basically yeah. one of those car crushes. Yeah. 150 quid, there's 150 quid, fix it. <laughs> I watched the news and calmed down a bit because there was a story about some Siamese twins who are having an operation. They've got two heads, four arms, two legs, one liver. The doctor said they will have one leg each. I felt bad worrying about the washer when people have bigger problems like the Siamese twins. Ricky and Steve asked me to do a poem about one day a week, so I thought I'd do one today. I can't obviously do it justice, so I should let the master read it. You've done another poem? Yeah, you said, you know, just, just do one. If you have a day where you've had a lot of emotions... Well, I, I loved the poem, and so did uh, the listeners, and I knew they would, so if you can do that every week, that'd be a joy well, you for can't, me. You can't force a poem, though. No, I so know. So a diary's easy to do, because you just write down yeah. what you're doing. But yeah. you've, you've got to have some really meaty subject matter to be able to write a poem, Rick, as you'll discover. I know. Right, so, you know, you've heard what problems they had that day. Go on, then. Bubbled wallpaper. What a mess. <coughs> Washer dry and knackered. What a mess. Siamese twins separated. One leg less. <laughs> What rhyming scheme that is again? <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Oh! <laughs> Fuck me! <sighs> well, there you go. That's the end of episode two of series three of the Ricky Gervais Show. Um, more next week. More drivel. More diary. Another poem, I hope. Maybe. Um, just more news and stuff from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Welcome to number three in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Had a good week, Carl? Uh, all right, just, just boring. It's a boring week. It was that, that sort of kidney operation I've had. Um, it's just affected my life in a big way. How are you now, Carl? Are you feeling better? Uh, better, better than it was last week. Because last week you really were not putting the effort in, were you? And it's your own fault. You know, you got kidney stones. You don't drink enough water. I yeah, no, well, that's that's what I've been doing this week. Just drinking. That's. I mean, you you said what what sort of week have you had? What have you been up to? That's what I've done. I've drank water. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. 
if there's a water shortage in London, <laughs> it's because of that. <coughs> Honestly, just that's what you have to do. Can't, it's sort of, it's just boring. It's like a, a basking shark. It's sort of, <laughs> With its mouth open, just going through the water. Uh, it. Oh, he's led the life of plankton. Have you, have you been able to do anything, or have you just been resting? Uh, it's best to rest, um, just because you know your body's still in shock, even though in the head, physically, I thought it was all right. Uh, the body sort of just acts in weird ways. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like I said last week, you you don't think about your body until there's something up with it. And then you panic a bit. And you go, right, I'm going to look after it from now on. I've been given a second chance here. Uh, as I said before, this was not a life-threatening illness or operation. No, but it's, it's that same thing. The last time I had it was when I nearly choked to death on the Mr. Freeze pop. Right. Where I had that sort of, uh, what do they call it when you have like a second coming? Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of thing where I you I don't go, think you're the second coming. No, but that, that thing... Goes, if you are, we're all screwed. That, you mean the second chance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a second chance. Thing where your life flashes before you, isn't it? Yeah, but you get a... Uh, you suddenly feel kinder. Do you know what I mean? You, really? Yeah, you sort of go, right, you know, that was a bit of a warning. Be like screwed. Good to people and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's normal. So are you now a nicer person? Are you giving more generously to charity and the like? Uh, well, they haven't been out, so I can't do anything. I can't help anyone. Yeah. Go online. And but maybe, uh, yeah. you know, once... You'll make some money, you'll just cash your in. No, I've given enough money away. Sick of it. But, um... Well, it's changed. So he hasn't changed at all, then, no. But you've also got to be careful as well, because there's that thing of... You can drown yourself uh, by having too much water. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right of not having too much and filling yourself up. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, it's that balance, right, of uh, not uh, dehydrating and, uh, you know, be- becoming like a-, a desert jellyfish, like a little crisp, and drowning yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, it is a balance. That's exactly what you've got to I do. I don't know how you've managed it, Carl. It's very complicated. Yeah. No, but what I, I do is I, um, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and when I'm not thirsty, I don't. Yeah, but the, that's the problem with me. Uh, th- whatever it is that's in your head that says you should have a drink, I don't really have one. <laughs> it's called a brain. It's called a brain. Yeah. It's the brain that tells you. <laughs> but the brain's never thirsty. I only think of drinking when I'm eating, and I'm not eating as much because my kidney's weird. I don't want to put any pressure on it, so I don't drink. So now, if I have it in front of me all the time, I go, right, I've got to have that. <laughs> so yeah, so I feel, you know, feel a bit better. Good. Just, uh, it's just been a long week because when you when you don't do much. It's just, you know, time doesn't whiz back. Normally your weeks are packed, as we know, with yeah. visits to the cobbler. And yeah. So. Well, it's just, like they say, isn't it? They say, uh... Following, following an ant. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You've know, got a hectic schedule. I know, but I don't know how you fit it all in. But, you know, because I was close to death and everything. <laughs> you weren't close to death. I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, other people who have been in that situation where they're dying and what have you. And it's weird how, like, in a way... Do you know, like they say before you die, things to do? Yeah, I I've never heard that sentence before. I don't know if they say. Well, I've extrapolated from that. What you mean is there are certain things you should do before you die: swim with dolphins, etc. Yeah, but in a way, because I've had such a boring week, it's been a long week. So if I was dying, don't go swim with dolphins because you'll love it, and the time will whiz by, and you go, "Oh, there's another day gone." Whereas I've been sat at home watching, you know, The Price is Right and stuff, and it's just like, "Oh, it's only four o'clock. Oh, this is dragging." So if I was dying, I'd go. Yeah, it's dragging, but I've got ages more left to live. Yeah, what's the point? But it's really about quality of existence, isn't it, when you're dying? No, but anyway, I'm just saying... Oh, OK. <laughs> been a boring week. But what I've been doing is going on the internet, oh, sort of learning stuff, of watching more documentaries about stuff. Yeah. Uh, OK, tell me something you watched on the internet, then. Uh, the thing that stands out the most, uh, there's this spider. Right. That a fella got. Um, popped it in like a little sort of bottle yeah and uh, chucked in 80 ants and the spider right just went mental and uh, I don't know if the spiders eat ants I don't know I don't know if they do uh, but uh, he wasn't happy with them that they were there and he was just whizzing around um, sort of biting them not eating them just giving them a bite and the ants would sort of just lie there dead and uh, Spider had this system of sort of going, right, I'm going to put the dead ones over there. And he was biting them, dragging them across, putting them in a pile, 
killing another one, popping it in the pile, and by the end of it, he made like a little pile of dead ants, and he was just there sort of breathing heavily. And that, that, that was amazing, because I've never witnessed that before.